again. I'm Mrs. Often, and this is Factoring, a review. And I should say, a quick review. We're not going to take lots of time to go over these four different methods of factoring. You should have seen them before in your Algebra 1 class. Now that you're in either Algebra 2, Algebra 3, or Pre-Calculus, you really need to know about factoring. But I graded some summer packets this year and found out that people really didn't know about factoring. So I'm going to do the greatest common factor, the AC method, a little bit on grouping, and just remind you of some special products that you should be able to recognize. Feel free to pause or stop the video at any point and try and go over either the problems that I've done or homework or summer problems that look like the problems you're about to look at. GCF stands for the greatest common factor. In this factoring method, I first begin by looking for a greatest common factor, something that I can factor out of each term. Now, it may be a number, it may be a variable. This is always going to be my first step. So here, I'm asked to factor x squared plus x. I notice that both terms have x in them. So I'm going to factor out x. Well, I notice that x squared divided by x is just x. Plus x divided by 1, or I'm sorry, x divided by x is 1. I can always check this by using the distributive property. And I see that my answer is right. So this is my factorization x times the quantity x plus 1. In my second problem, I'm asked to factor x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x. Again, I notice every term has an x in it. So I'll factor that out first. Well, now I have something in parentheses, a trinomial, that may look like the things you factored a lot of in Algebra 1. So this is something that's easier for me to factor. And I'll just factor that real quickly. I suggest if you check using multiplication that you first multiply these two expressions, x plus 3 and x plus 2 together, and then multiply the whole thing by x. I think it's just easier that way. But there's your factorization. Again, remember you can stop the video at any time and redo these problems just to check and see that you've gotten it. The AC method refers to the fact that we're going to multiply the first and last terms together. In this, A is 5, C is 2, B is 7. So I'm going to ask myself, what are two numbers that multiply to equal positive 10 and add to equal 7? Well, you can say, hey, 5 times 2 adds up to 7. If you weren't so lucky as me, you can check a variety of numbers. With 10, fortunately, there's not a lot of choices. So I'm going to break up my B term, 7x, into 5x plus 2x. And I'll write it like this. Now I'm going to use a method called factoring by grouping. I'll do one more of these after the AC method. The greatest common factor of the first two terms is 5x. I'm left with x plus 1 in parentheses. In the second set of two terms, my greatest common factor is 2. Since this begins with a positive 2, I'm going to factor out a positive 2. So I'm going to put plus 2 here. And again, dividing each of these terms by positive 2, I get x plus 1. The term that is in parentheses here and here or the expression that is in parentheses, is my first factor, x plus 1. My second factor is created by 
combining the two terms outside the parentheses. And there's my completely factored expression. Let's try this again with a slightly more challenging problem. In our second expression, a is 4, c is negative 3, and b is 9. So I have ac and b. So I have ac is negative 12, and b is 9. Well, if I'm thinking of two numbers that multiply to equal negative 12 and add to equal 9, I could be out of luck. In fact, I am out of luck. So I'm going to change this a little bit. And we're going to put 4 here. Right. Be cautious when you write your own factoring problems is the moral here. Okay. So now I'm back to 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to equal negative 12 and add to equal 4. Um, negative 6 and 2 won't work, but 6 and negative 2 will. Okay, so factoring out my greatest common factor here, it's 2x. So I have 2x times the quantity 2x plus 3. Now, this begins with a negative, my second two terms. There's not a greatest common factor that I can see, but I notice it begins with a negative. I'm going to factor out negative one. So, my final expression in factored form will be 2x plus three times 2x minus one. This one is worth reviewing repeatedly. You can find lots of factoring worksheets to practice on the internet, or just ask me for a few. Sometimes, you'll be given something that already has four terms. In this, you can go just directly to factor it by grouping. You'll notice here, x cubed plus x squared minus 36x minus 36. I'll divide this into two groups of two terms. So, greatest common factor of my first two terms is x squared. This leaves me with x plus 1. My greatest common factor over here is negative 36. Again, I am left with x plus 1 when I factor out 36. This is going to give me a factor form of x plus 1 times x squared minus 36. Now, I happen to know that x squared minus 36 can be factored as x plus 6 times x minus 6. So, there's my fully factored form. Sometimes with factoring by grouping, you'll get something here that cannot be factored any further. That's okay. Sometimes with greatest common factor, you'll get something that can't be factored any further. Sometimes this happens, but a lot of times, and especially in math practice sheets, it doesn't. So you shouldn't get a worksheet that says, for 19 out of 20 problems, can't be factored. That just means you didn't try hard enough. Okay, some special patterns you should know. Most popular is the difference of two squares. A squared minus B squared is equal to the product of A minus B times the quantity A plus B. An example, 49x squared minus 100y squared. Well, 49x squared is 7x quantity squared, and 100y squared is 10y squared. I factor it as 7x minus 10y and 7x plus 10y. This trinomial pattern is known as a perfect square binomial. We'll see this a lot when we learn about completing a square. A plus B quantity squared. To get this, you square A 
you multiply A times B, then multiply by 2, and then you square B, and you add them all together. That's another special pattern. And the final two special patterns that I want you to know about are the sum and difference of cubes. If you've already taken Algebra 2, you've already learned about these. x cubed plus y cubed, x plus y, times the quantity x squared minus xy plus y squared. If you have a difference of two perfect cubes, start out with x minus y. Cubed. Cube root of the first minus cube root of the second. The second trinomial is x squared plus xy plus y squared. I hope this brief review of factoring has been helpful to you. Thanks so much and have a great day.